السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى The most gracious, the most merciful The one who loves to forgive We seek his forgiveness الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى He who loves to forgive So we seek his forgiveness And we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household, his companions, may Allah bless them. May Allah bless all those who struggled and strove over the centuries in a way that they learned the deen, they practiced it, they taught it to their children and to others, and they passed the baton so that today we are seated here. We need to pray for them. We may never know them. We need to seek that Allah bless them. May Allah bless us all. And we need to understand the responsibility on our shoulders to continue that so that one day, generations down, people will be praying for us too. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us concerned and may he make us responsible. My brothers and sisters, the beautiful last 10 nights of this beautiful month of Ramadan, there is a message doing its rounds saying that I was the one who said that you need to read this so many times and you need to read that so many times and you need to make a salah in each unit. You need to read this surah and that surah. That message is totally fabricated. The only thing I can tell you is what Aisha radiallahu anha taught us that she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what should I read on the night of Laylatul Qadr? And he said, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni, O oh Allah. You are most forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive me. For me, that dua is absolutely powerful. If Allah accepts it once, wallahi, think about what it means. We are actually telling Allah, oh Allah, you love to forgive. What type of hope is this? It's amazing. Imagine, we've all done wrong, haven't we? We're all weak. We say, oh Allah, you love to forgive, so forgive me. I am your slave. I am helpless. I am totally dependent on you. That is an awesome, powerful dua. Do not underestimate it. It doesn't mean you've got to repeat something a million times before Allah hears you. But it does mean you've got to be genuine and sincere in your call to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us. We dive straight into Surah As-Safat, the surah after Surah Yasin. It is surah number 37 of the Quran. In this surah, there are so many stories of the prophets mentioned in a slight bit of detail, highlighting different aspects of these lives of the messengers. However, I want to draw my attention and yours to something beautiful about Ibrahim alayhi salam. In this surah, Surah Al-Safat, the story of how he went to sacrifice his son is made mention of in a little bit of greater detail than anywhere else in the Quran. And this is why in this beautiful surah, Allah tells us how Ibrahim alayhi salam's quality was such that it was absolutely unique. Allah took him as a friend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two what is known as Khalil, al Khalilain. The first is Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Khalil is actually the highest level of friendship. It is called al Khullah. Khullah meaning the highest level of friends. So Ibrahim alayhi salam is a Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for your information is also Khalilullah if you did not know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a friendship with him and may Allah make us from those who are close to him. Amen. So how did he become such a close friend of Allah? By obeying Allah's instruction immediately whether he understood it or did not understand it. The fact that he knew it came from Allah, he blindly followed it. That was what made him the Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he saw the dream, you know that immediately he told his son, Oh my son, I've seen a dream. Inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk fanzur madha tara. O my son, I have seen the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via a dream that I was sacrificing you. What do you think I should do? The son says, Ya abatif al ma tu'mar satajiduni in sha Allah minas sabirin. Oh, my father, do as Allah has instructed you. You will find me to be from among the patient. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What instruction? 
Brothers and sisters, Allah has not instructed us to do something we don't understand. He instructs us to pray. He instructs us to abstain from haram, from that which is harmful to us. But we still don't do it. Here is Ibrahim alayhi salam given an instruction he never understood ever. He did not understand it, but he knew it was from Allah. So he attempted to fulfill it sincerely for Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 104 of Surah Al-Safat. وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا إِبْرَاهِيمُ قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤِيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ and we called out to him. The moment he went to fulfill that dream, we said, Oh, Ibrahim, you have indeed fulfilled what you've been instructed via the dream. And indeed, in this way, we will re recompense those who do good, which means doing good was obeying the instruction of Allah. Allah tells you, get up for Salatul Fajr. My brothers and sisters, that is not sacrificing your son. It is nothing compared to sacrificing your son. And we still don't get up. Subhanallah, some people get up for suhoor in Ramadan and sleep away before Salatul Fajr. Do you believe that? May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. My brothers and sisters, look at what we learn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 104 and 105, we have indeed become pleased with you, O Ibrahim. Allah says, we replaced that sacrifice with a ram from Jannah and we will keep its memory forever and ever and you will be remembered by those after you in goodness. That was a gift of Allah. We save ourselves from the wrath of Allah by following the instruction of Allah. Allah says, this is haram, this is halal. Consider haram, haram and halal, halal. You will be saved. Your body will be saved. The food that is not permissible to consume, don't consume it. It's not healthy for you. It's not good for you. Whether you know or not. Whether science says yes or no. If Allah says no, it's a no. Done. Subhanallah. And you need to be convinced that if Allah says something, I am definitely a mu'min. I believe that he made us. He knows better than you and I what is best for me and you. Subhanallah. This is Ibrahim alayhi salam. How did he achieve friendship of Allah? Do we want that friendship or a portion of it? Well, one of the ways of achieving it is to do that which will please Allah. Stay away from that which is prohibited. What a beautiful lesson we learned from this lovely story that we always hear. So I want to quickly repeat it. Ibrahim alayhi salam, every time Allah instructed him to do something, it was so difficult, even if it didn't make sense. I can give you one quick example. When he was told to leave his children in Mecca in the desert and to proceed, he turned around and he started walking. And his family says, where are you going? He continued because he didn't want to look back at them and feel sorry for them. He says, if Allah has instructed me, then definitely I need to keep walking. Today, that Mecca that was barren with only two people in it has been converted into the hub of the entire globe. Every one of our hearts is stuck in Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. We would all love to be near the Kaaba right now. Subhanallah. That is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah will give you, my brothers and sisters, a good memory when you've passed away. People will say, I had a great grandfather. He was a great man. You know, he did this and did... Why not? Subhanallah. Today, we don't even know our grandfathers, let alone great grandfather. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us great in his eyes. Amen. Let's move on to the next beautiful surah, Surah Saad. In Surah Saad also there are stories of certain prophets made mention of and beautiful examples. But the one I want to draw, something we're all guilty of. You and I know that sometimes you hear a story and before you actually verify it, you've already believed it and you've already issued judgment and you've already passed it on and the whole world already knows the wrong story. Don't we do that? It's a fact. We all do it. I'm guilty perhaps as well. Because subhanallah, we all require attention. Myself included. It does not mean that because I'm talking to you, I'm a saint. No. I'm talking to you. I need what I'm saying more desperately than you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify me and forgive me. And may Allah forgive all of us. So my brothers and sisters, what is important for us to remind each other about is whenever a tale comes to you, don't believe it. Authenticate it, verify it. Number one, if it does not concern you, throw it out. You've got enough in your memory. You know, today we lack concentration in salah. We lack concentration in so many good deeds. We feel lazy to do good deeds. Can I tell you why? Let's go back to your mobile phone. What phones do you have? Samsung, iPhone, Huawei, if you want to call it that, or Huawei. When I went to China, they told me it's pronounced Huawei. I said, okay, no problem. It's a Huawei. 
Whatever you have, my brothers and sisters, by the way, that's a very, very good phone. Subhanallah, I've been using it for, for a while. 128 gigabytes is just the standard memory. I don't know why I'm advertising for them. But anyway, the point I want to raise is when you have a memory, what happens? You've taken a few photos, you've got a few videos, you've done a few things, and the next best thing is the phone is full. It becomes slow, it becomes sluggish. Why? You just got it, but the memory is full. Too many photos, too many videos. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, do you learn a lesson from that? about your own system. We also have a brain. We have a gigabyte capacity, terabyte capacity. You have a mind. If you fill it with unnecessary pictures, a lot of memory is taken by photographs. A lot of your memory is consumed by images, by videos, by pornography, by that which is haram. Too much is occupied. So now when you try to activate and you quickly want to say Allahu Akbar, your mind is sluggish. By the time your system kicks in, the Imam is already saying Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Why? Your phone, subhanallah. Your memory. So we become sluggish. Take it out. That's why I say we need to clean ourselves. Save yourself by deleting that which is unnecessary from your system. How many of us have restarted our phones and restored factory settings or got a chip external hard drive to say this, I don't need it right now. Shift all the photos into there so that my phone can work. Subhanallah. Let's do it to ourselves. Take out, format, go back to factory settings. It's Ramadan. You can return to factory settings by saying, Allahumma innaka afuun. To hibbul afwa fa'afu anni. You will reset your system by the will of Allah. Wallahi, I promise you, you get up fresh from Ramadan. Click, click. You there for Salatul Fajr, the first day of Eid. Mashallah, masjid is full. Why? I have a new system. As soon as the bell rang, I was up before that because I'm used to getting up so early. Allah helped you. But with us, no. We'd start downloading unnecessary things. I have a grudge against that one, hatred against this one. I'm into pornography. I'm into adultery. I can't wait to commit that sin, this sin, into gambling, into drugs, into my gangs, etc. Be careful. Let's improve ourselves. My brothers and sisters, we can do it. So let's go to this beautiful lesson. Like I say, we're talking about saving ourselves. Verse number 24 of Surah Saad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a mention of a beautiful story of Dawood alayhi salam. I told you Dawood was the father. He was the dad, right? Alayhi salatu wa salam. So people came to him with a dispute. Allah makes mention of the details of this dispute. Allah says, Khasmani baga ba'duna ala ba'd. There are two of us who are disputing between each other. About what? about sheep that we have. We have sheep. So the one man says, you know, that guy has 99 sheep. I only have one. And he still wants that one from me. And he has 99. So Dawood alayhi salam looks at him and says, you know what? You shouldn't be doing this. Subhanallah. Hang on. It doesn't mean that just because he has 99 and this guy has one, that this guy is right. Perhaps that one also could belong to that person who has 99, making it 100 and this might not be his. It could, it's possible, isn't it? It does not make it right and wrong, even though it's glaringly seeming so. But that's not correct. So Allah says, subhanallah, that Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam told him, that you know what? لَقَدْ ظَلَمَكَ بِسُؤَالِ نَعْجَتِكَ إِلَىٰ نِعَاجِهِ he passed a judgment without listening to the other side. He says, you know, he's oppressed you. How can he ask you for your one just because he's got 99? And he says, this one is also yours. And, and then he said a powerful statement, which is valid. I'm going to divert in order to present it because we need to save ourselves. You know, when we have businesses, try and avoid partnership. You know why? It's not something that is encouraged. It is just a last resort. When you have partners, you need to have a big heart. If you don't have a big heart, and if, you're, if your heart is connected to wealth, that partnership is going to end in a very sour way, even if you are brothers. Remember that. It has to happen. If you are miserly, and if you don't have a very big heart, partnerships do not work. If you want to go into partnership with someone, you need to love them enough to say okay to discrepancies that shall occur, because that is the nature of partnerships. Remember this. Where do I get this from? Here, Dawood alayhi salam says, وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْخُلَطَاءِ لَيَبْغِي بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَقَلِيلٌ مَّا هُمْ He says, most of the partners, they, they try to go beyond their limit with the partner. They actually transgress beyond the limit. Limits. They eat what is not theirs in that partnership except those who believe and do good deeds 
and there are very, very few of them. That was the statement of Dawood, alayhi salam. What advice do we have? Save yourselves. If you really need to go into a partnership, it is totally permissible. Remember that. There is no prohibition. But you need to go in with the right people. You need to be honest. You need to have an honest partner. You need to learn to love each other. And as you grow older, break the partnership while you are still friends. Distribute while you are alive. Your children will kill each other regarding your business, especially if it goes into the millions and the tens and hundreds of millions. Remember this. Go and watch anyone. I know of very, very few exceptions in my life. Go and watch anyone, no matter who they are. After some time, they start fighting like cats and dogs. Why? Because man has love for wealth, love for power. And this is what makes him fight, subhanAllah. Wealth can actually destroy father and child relation, mother and daughter relation, husband and wife relation, people getting divorced. The husband wants to claim something that's not even his from the property of the wife. Or the ex-wife wants to claim something that's not hers. It keeps on happening and it repeats itself. Make things clear. Save yourselves from calamity and disaster by making things absolutely clear when it comes to business. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So that was a slight diversion, the topic about partnership and how important it is to go into partnership if you really have to with the right people, with a very big heart, preparedness to say it's okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who learn a beautiful lesson. Many of us who are already in partnership must be thinking, hey, how do I get out of it now too late <laughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor us may Allah bless us all with beautiful sustenance remember my brothers and sisters Allah gives us what is enough for us we fight for more than that that's what it is if you're fighting it's for beyond your basic necessity generally the basic necessity Allah will cater for you don't worry may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and open our doors let's move on so he passed a judgment regarding this man and immediately he realized that, you know what? I was wrong. Obviously, he's a prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah makes mention of this in order to teach us a lesson. What is it? Save yourselves from accusing people or judging without listening to both parties thoroughly. If you're not prepared to give both parties an equal chance to present their cases and their evidence, remain mum. Keep quiet. If you want to pass a judgment, listen to two sides. You will be surprised. I have been called into arbitrations on many occasions whereby the person calling me into the arbitration was later discovered to be wrong. And they sometimes tell me, but you know, why did you do this? I was the one who called you in here. So, well, you called the wrong person. I was going to listen to both sides and pass a judgment. It doesn't mean that you called me, so you are right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But that's what we think. That's my sheikh. You know, my sheikh is supposed to, like a lawyer, supposed to fight my case. No! A sheikh is different, different, not just you pay him and he fights your case, no. He is supposed to be honest that you know what, listen brother, mashallah, you are wrong and this is what I suggest you do and you are my brother, you know, I love you, I care for you, I respect you and please try and listen to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. May Allah help us resolve our disputes and problems in an amicable way. Sometimes some of the problems of the ummah, they take very long to resolve. Keep on making dua to Allah. Keep on trying, keep on having hope and be just. It doesn't mean that you have to forego the justice. It doesn't mean that every time I just need to say, it's okay, it's okay. You need to know if someone has usurped your right, you do have a right to tackle them. You do have a right to take it up and to ensure that you get that right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how as a result of this, Sulaiman, sorry, Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, he fell prostrate for Allah. He sought his forgiveness and he knew that he was tested by Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter says, verse number 26 of the surah, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard. فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ O oh Dawood, we have made you a vicegerent on earth. We have made you a Khalifa on the earth. So judge between the people with justice in a proper way, listening to both sides. Do not follow your desires and whims because that 
will indeed lead you astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to learn a lesson from this. Let's move on, mashallah. Surah to Zumar. What a beautiful surah. It is named after the groups. Zumar, referring to little crowds of people. Why Zumar? Because Allah speaks of heaven and hell, Jannah and Jahannam. And Allah says the people will enter heaven in groups, groups of people. They will be going in with their leaders. They will be going in with their prophets. They will be going in in groups, etc. And when the people enter Jahannam, they will also be going in groups with their chummies, with their friends, with whoever was there, you know, in the world. Subhanallah. Those who might not know what that means, it's a local term here in South Africa referring to bosom buddies, right? Your friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good friendship. So people will be entering into Jahannam with their own friends, with their own groups. The groups that they had perhaps in the dunya, they used to do all the wrong together. They will also be clustered together. It's dangerous. When you read about it in the Quran, it's actually hair raising. It makes you scared. You've got friends, just ask yourself, which way are we heading? It won't be very difficult to actually figure it out. You know, if your friends, you're always together thinking of good and doing good and trying to do good, then Alhamdulillah, you can imagine the group entering into Jannah together as a group saying, hey guys, let's go. As you used to say, let's go to the masjid. You say, let's enter the door. That's our door. And we're all going in, mashallah. And if you guys used to go clubbing and pubbing together, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us turn before it is too late. Save yourselves, my brothers and sisters. Have good friends. Good friends such that you know when you look at them and you talk to them, you can pick what's going to happen in the hereafter inshallah and it's never too late never ever too late because you're still alive subhanallah we're going to come to that verse about being late before i actually get into these groups and i want to mention one point about the group but i must tell you the verse that has in it the greatest hope in the entire quran it is called arja ayah fil quran al karim the ayah that has the greatest hope in the Quran is verse number 53 of Surah to Zumar, which is Surah number 39. Do you want to hear it? No verse in the Quran has expressed greater hope for us than this verse. Let's hear it. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, never lose hope ever, ever, ever in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, Allah forgives every single sin. He will forgive every single sin. For indeed, He is most forgiving, most merciful. Subhanallah. What mercy is this? Allah tells his most beloved to talk to all of us and to tell us, no matter what you've done, don't you dare lose hope. Allahu Akbar. That's Allah talking to you. Don't lose hope. Don't think that, oh, now, you know, I've done too much. Is tawbah okay for me or not? It is okay. Here's Allah. If you lose hope, you're insulting Allah because your maker told you, never lose hope. I know what you've done. I know where you've been. I know what you've been into. And I am telling you, do not lose hope. Come back. I'm waiting for you. Subhanallah. The hadith says, when we seek the forgiveness of Allah, Allah becomes so happy with us, yet he doesn't need us. Do you know why? Because the devil promised Allah, these people won't turn. And then the devil comes and make us think, you are a write-off. You've been written off. You are not fit for the forgiveness of Allah. If we fall into that trap, we anger Allah. If we don't fall into the trap and we say, oh Allah, the devil is trying to make me lose hope. But I know that you are the most merciful because you told us in verse number 53 of surah number 39 in the Quran that we should never lose hope. I refuse to lose hope, oh Allah. You have mercy on me. Forgive me. I know I'm worth paradise. Paradise. Subhanallah. Amazing. We are worth paradise. Allah loves us. That's why when you hear something like this, don't you feel good? You know why you feel good? Because you have Iman. That's why. You believe in Allah. You have faith. You have the Shahada. That's why you are feeling good about it when you say, No, I know I've done bad. I admit my sin. But I have hope in Jannah. And I'm going to go there. And I'm going to try. Please, let's not fall in another trap of the devil. What is it? Shaitan says, did you hear that Allah is most merciful? Did you hear? Keep on clubbing. Don't worry. Keep on doing your thing. Don't worry about alcohol. It's minor. A few drops won't affect Allah. What? Subhanallah. 
You need to make sure that you don't fall into that trap because that's another extreme. One hand, shaitan wants to make you lose hope. The other hand, he wants to make you have too much of hope that you actually now think that, you know, it's free for all. It's okay. Allah's okay. He's fine. I remember someone who was semi-nude. Subhanallah, telling others that, you know what? Allah doesn't judge me by my outer clothing. It's a fact that Allah doesn't judge you by your external being. But when you're asking for trouble, then you judge yourself. We won't judge you. You judge yourself. You know what Allah wants of you. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. At the same time, we're all grappling and we're all trying to become better people, to quit whatever weaknesses we have. Let's not be judgmental. When we see people who have open weaknesses, try and help. Don't be derogatory because Allah might expose your hidden weakness. They might have an apparent weakness. So don't become judgmental and abusive and don't look at people and start pointing fingers. No, we try to help each other. I tell you why. We're all drowning and we all need to save each other. Those who've been saved by the will of Allah, we will never regret. But try to save other people while you're saving yourself. Aren't we talking about saving ourselves? We're all drowning. Everywhere you go, there is sin to be committed wholesale, free, subhanallah, free. In fact, it's not free. You've got to pay. I'm just thinking about it. A lot of the sins you have to pay. Going to the clubs, you've got to pay. Gambling, you've got to pay. Alcohol, you've got to pay. Drugs, you've got to pay. Adultery, you've got to pay. What else? You've got to pay for absolutely everything. But come to the masjid, free. Fast, free. Salah, free. Dress properly, free. <laughs> Imagine. So I was actually wrong if you look at it that way. To earn the mercy of Allah is free. To get the punishment, you've got to pay. But we still willingly pay. Hey, I'll do it. I'll save my money. I'll go. I'll do this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So there is another part of the verse. The second part of the verse actually draws us back to reality. Where Allah says, look, I told you not to lose hope, didn't I? But I want to tell you, do it quickly. Listen to what Allah says in verse number 54. That's the next one. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And turn to Allah, turn back to Allah and surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the punishment comes to you and then you won't be helped. So Allah is telling you in one verse, look how beautiful the Quran is. Allah is telling you, you know what, I'm merciful, don't lose hope in my mercy. But I want to tell you, you don't know how long you're going to live, so turn today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for tomorrow. That's what Allah is saying. And in fact, in the next verse, it's even made clearer. Allah says, Follow the best of that which has been revealed from your Rabb before the punishment comes to you suddenly. And you won't even have realized that, hey, it's, I'm overtaken with the punishment. Which means death may come to us at any time. The destruction might come at any time. Allah says, I'm teaching you to be hopeful, but I also want you to do it quickly, as soon as possible, because you don't know how long you're going to live. My brothers and sisters, you want to taste the sweetness, you turn to Allah. Let us all turn to Allah. Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. I want to end by making mention of those groups. Verse number 71 of the surah makes mention of the people of hellfire. Wasiqa alladhina kafaru ila jahan. The people of hellfire will be driven into hellfire in groups. When they get to hellfire, the doors will then be opened for them and the gatekeepers will ask them a question, a very, very important question. أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا Did nobody come to you? Did no messengers come to you reciting the verses of Allah to you and reminding you of this particular day? That's the question the angels will be asking those who will be entering hellfire and they will say, yeah. They came, they came, but alas, they didn't follow. That's the problem. 
So Allah says, we sent you messengers who read our verses to you. We made sure you got the message. It got to your ears. What did you do about it? Did you improve yourself? My brothers and sisters, let's inch forward to Allah. Tonight, let's promise Allah we will be better than yesterday. And tomorrow we will be better than today by the will of Allah. And inshallah, in that way, we will definitely be able to save ourselves from being from among the groups who will be asked this question when they enter hellfire. Rather, we will be greeted with salam, salam well, as we enter in groups, جنه الفردوس and paradise may allah grant us jannah aqul qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk